गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स वाइवा ऑन थोरेक्सिक स्केल्टन की इस न्यू सीरीज में आई एम वेलकमिंग यू सो यू आर वेलकम फॉर द न्यू सीरीज ऑन द वाइवा ऑन थोरेसिक स्केल्टन वी हैव जस्ट फिनिश द वाइवा ऑन टू द बोन्स ऑफ द हेड एंड नेक रीजन ओके नाउ लेट एस सी दैट लेट मी एक्सप्लेन यू दैट इन दिस न्यू सीरीज the first video is on the viva based on thoracic skeleton articulated thoracic skeleton and after that in the rest of the four videos i will just talk to you about the usual viva question asked on the other parts of the i'm say the various bones forming the thoracic skeleton for example we can take two videos on typical and atypical thoracic vertebra we can talk about the viva question on the ribs and then we can also talk on the viva on the sternum so this is the video for the viva on the articulated thoracic skeleton now all those illustrations i have taken from the grant atlas of anatomy walters kluwer are the publisher and i was the editor of this book which i edited about one and a half years back and this is a very good atlas i just i'm not recommending it for because i have taken but it is really a very good atlas you can consult this atlas either by purchasing or go to your library and see this south asia edition atlas on the grant anatomy now if we come to the viva asked on to the bones which are forming the thoracic skeleton we will see that the thoracic cage is a bony cage which is enclosing the vital organs like heart and lungs the great vessels like branches are taking origin from the arch of aorta and the vena cava which are bringing the venous blood to the heart okay so the important question which an examiner will ask to begin with on the thoracic skeleton viva will be that what is the purpose of formation of this thoracic cage you say that there are two purpose for formation of thoracic cage which is like a cage okay this is number 1 is that it is protecting the vital organs like the heart lung and the great vessel second purpose of forming this thoracic cage which is formed by the ribs as well as the intercostal muscles the it is that this cage helps in the respiration in the inspiration and expiration you have seen that during the heavy uh, breathing our chest wall is moving okay forward backwards up and down okay and this is possible because of the movement of the ribs which are moved by the intercostal and other muscles so these are the two purpose why our thoracic skeleton is cage like okay it is cage like then the next question may be there it is that what are the bones which are forming the thoracic skeleton you say that posteriorly there is a column what is called as vertebral column and 12 thoracic vertebra form this the region of the thoracic vertebral column so it is formed by 12 thoracic vertebrae with the intervening intervertebral disc let us see in this diagram this blue color which are between the bodies of the vertebrae is the intervertebral disc so there are 11 intervertebral discs between the 12 thoracic vertebrae okay then you say the second type of bone which are helping in formation of thoracic cage beside this vertebrae thoracic vertebrae are the <coughs> ribs right and left side there are 12 ribs okay and then the anterior end of this 12 rib is formed by the costal cartilages and thus the ribs and costal cartilages they cover the thoracic region posteriorly laterally and anteriorly most anteriorly this costal cartilage will unite with this bone what is called as sternum so there will be the question on the sternum and he can ask what are the parts of the sternum you just tell the three different parts of the sternum which we will see in the next slide then you remain an important question can be there if you are replying well what are the supports of this 
sternum bone or the anterior bone where all costal cartilages are getting attached you say that it is a free bone there is no support from below it is the support only from lateral side and this is because of the costal cartilage okay and at the upper end the clavicle is articulating otherwise from below there is no support to this uh, bone that is the sternum let's go to the next diagram where we will learn this bone which are forming this is, is skeleton okay from anterior to posterior side okay let us see this hmm, thoracic cage we are talking about this bone the sternum which is also called as the breast bone and if you see in the second diagram the sternum is formed by how many bones that may be the next question and you can say that sternum the upper end piece of the sternum is called as manubrum or manubrum sterni and then the middle piece is called as the body of the sternum while the lower triangular piece very small it is called as gp or gphyte process then the next next question can come what are the joints between this pieces you can say the joint between the manubrum and the body is manubro sternal joint which is also called as sternal angle so if we will see this from side there will be an angle will be seen here then there be the questions that what is the name of the joint between gphyte process and the body of the sternum you tell that it is the gp gp sternal joint it is the gp sternal another question will be there how many costal cartilage they are articulating to the lateral margin of this sternum you say that the first costal cartilage articulates with the manubrum sterni but the second costal cartilage it is joining the gpo uh, this many bro sternal joint okay that is sternal angle it is at the level of the sternum the rest of the other costal cartilage that is the third the fourth the fifth the sixth and seven they are articulating at the lateral margin of the body and the gp sternal joint okay lateral margin of gp sternal joint now then he may ask you a question what about the other costal cartilages that means you have only said seven then you say that the other costal cartilage for example the eighth costal cartilage the ninth costal cartilage where pointer is moving and this is the tenth costal cartilage they articulate with each other uh, as the eighth articulate with that of the seventh uh, uh, ninth articulate with the eighth and tenth articulate with that of the ninth costal cartilages what about the 10th and i am say 11th and 12th rib costal cartilage which are present at the tip you say that hmm, these are the floating ribs they are not complete ribs okay so they are not articulating with the other ribs but they are posteriorly forming the thoracic cage okay help in formation of the thoracic cage this many questions may be there then important question may be there what is the significance of this sternal angle or many bro sternal joint you say that since the second costal cartilage articulated this sternal angle and sternal angle is seen okay by eyes in a lean and thin person or if you can feel it as a reach in an obese person so this help us to calculate i mean say count the ribs so at the sternal angle there will be second cartilage articulating you can then go laterally to feel the second rib and from there downward if you keep on pressing in the mid axillary going towards the mid axillary line then you can calculate the number of the ribs and the intercostal space this is very important okay to know the uh, ribs number and uh, which you have to observe on the thoracic cage of a patient okay of a before the ecg leads uh, or for that of the injection in various intercostal spaces or to know the surface uh, structure of those various uh, pleural reflection or that of the lower margin of the lung like that
Now then, there may be the question, how many ribs are there which forms the thoracic cage, which we have already discussed. You say that there are 12 pairs of ribs, 12 on right side and 12 on left side. Then he may ask you how you will classify these many ribs. You say that the ribs are classified in many ways. For example, they may be classified as true ribs. It may be classified as false or floating ribs. So he may ask, what is a true rib? You can say that rib number 1 to rib number 7, since they are articulating with the sternum, they are called as true ribs. The false ribs are those ribs that has 8th, 9th, 8th, 9th and 10th because they are not directly articulating with the lateral margin of the sternum, okay, through their costal cartilages, okay, that they are called as the false ribs and the remaining 11th and 12th rib, they are called as the floating ribs, okay. Then he may ask that how many of these ribs out of the 12th, they can they are having the similar features that means their anatomical structures are resembling to one another and this kind of the ribs they are called as typical you say that from rib number three to rib number nine okay they have the same anatomical features and they are called as typical ribs while the atypical ribs are number one number two because their structures are different, they don't resemble with anyone and then it is 10, 11 and 12 are also called as atypical ribs because they have the different structure. We will learn uh, the viva on this various types of the rib in a separate video, okay, separate video. I hope that you got an idea about the ribs and sternum. Then there may be a question about the thoracic vertebral column. He may ask you about the concavity of the thoracic vertebral column. You say that the thoracic vertebral column is concave anteriorly, okay? It is anteriorly and it is formed by the 12 thoracic vertebra and 11 intervening the intercostal uh, I would say intervertebral disc, okay, intervertebral disc. This column posteriorly articulates with the head of the ribs onto the vertebral bodies and to the transverse process on this tubercle as it is seen in this die. The head is articulating with two adjacent bodies of vertebra and the intervertebral disc, but here at the angle okay close to the angle on the neck it is articulating with the transverse process okay at the tubercle is articulating this we are going to discuss in detail when i will uh, tell you about the viva questions on the vertebral bodies okay on the vertebral bodies thank you very much for watching this video